Okay, so following on from when I looked at Slackware from 1993, I thought it would be good to look at a Linux desktop. And this is Mandrake 7.2 from the year 2000. So okay, welcome to KDE version 2.0, which was part of Mandrake 7.2. And here is our basic desktop. You can see this is very similar to what you would have expected from Windows around the time, Windows 95, Windows 98. Uh, this kind of taskbar here at the bottom. I like this little thing. If you click here, the little taskbar disappears. But let's open up a terminal and have a look at a few things. First of all, we'll do a cat of slash etc. Red Hat release. So that tells you that Mandriva was based actually on Red Hat. Mandrake, sorry, it became Mandriva after with Linux Mandrake release 7.2 Odyssey. And if we do a uname minus A, we'll see that we're running the Linux kernel 2.2.17. Dash 21 MDK MDK there for Mandrake. So that's the patches that they've applied to this kernel in time for uh, Mandrake uh, 7.2. And if we go up here to help, we can say about KDE and we can see it's the K desktop environment release 2.0. So that's where we're at. So what do you get for KDE uh, release 2.0? Of course, at the moment, KDE is in its series 5, so 5. Uh, whatever it is right now and this is way back in version 2. First of all we have some virtual desktops here down here at the bottom so for example if we open up again the terminal you can then flick to the different desktops that was very popular back then uh, in, in the uh, in the 2000s there and over here on the left is where you have the main menu like Windows the start and up at the top here we have amusement which basically means games so they gave you a whole bunch of little noddy games here that you can play and actually i quite like this one here kind of a snake game worm game for uh, gnome so here we go let's see if we can play this game now what i like about this one is that you can actually go on and off the screen so if you go down here you come in the other side and you can go up here and you come out here at the bottom so there you go a very, very simple game that came along with uh, KDE. And notice this is GNOME, GNOME Nibbles, but it runs under KDE because what was happening even, and it's still true today, even though there's KDE and even though there was uh, GNOME, actually the libraries were in both desktops, so you could always run programs one from the other. So what else have we got here? We've got applications, archiving, communications, development, editors. So for example, you could open up a very simple editor. There we go. Hello, and that's just a text editor, and of course you can save and open and so on from there. And here on KDE, just so you know, you can move around, of course, this would be to maximize, and this would be to minimize, and then it stays there on the toolbar, and you can open it up again and get rid of it like that. Do we want to save it? No, we don't. Okay, so what else have we got here? Uh, configuration, we'll go more into that in a, in a moment. Uh, multimedia graphics and sound and so on okay the network configuration on oh, networking here of course this is what you could uh, do instant messaging there's no Facebook Messenger or or WhatsApp or anything like that at this time we're talking things like IRC and things like that of course there's some email programs uh, and of course the main show here of course is with all the different productivity apps you've got Abbey Word which is a, a very good but simple program and we can you know do all your normal things we can select that and we can put it into bold and you know we can change it into bigger typeface and all this kind of stuff and then there was quite a lot of the um, uh, GNU uh, office programs there like uh, GNU Merrick there it is which of course it was is a GNU spreadsheet and there you could do all your spreadsheet stuff uh, and of course there was KDE office so that is built into here and here we see it KDE office workspace which means we can then open up a spreadsheet or or a um or a word or a document a keyword document what type of document do you want well we just have an a4 one okay so that's all the pretty simple stuff you could do there illustrator k presenter for slides so that's the kind of general things that you could do and then of course you can also open a terminal as we did and then you get into the control center 
So I wanted just to show you that. Here is the KDE control center where you could start to change things about how the KDE uh, functions. If we go to look and feel, for example, we can go to background and then we can go to wallpaper and we can di pick different wallpapers. So, you know, here's all the ones that come. They're not actually, to be honest, very interesting. You know, if you apply that now, you know, there you get your wallpaper. Uh, it's not really what we're used to today. Uh, we'll, we used to watch much more sophisticated you know, wonton soup, look at that. Uh, much more sophisticated ones, but actually the, these default ones were not bad with the little uh, mandrake sign down there at the bottom, the little penguin coming out of the egg there. Uh, and so you can play around with all that stuff. Uh, a screensaver, I always like to go into screensavers. Look at this, this is a real blast from the past. Look at this, so which one was it that I liked? Oh, pipes, that was it. Just like on Windows that you used to get back then, the 3D pipes being built as your screensaver. How many of you remember that? And I always liked Swarm. I, this always fascinated me to watch how these swarms built and flew. Of course, that's from X screensaver originally from, from Unix, and that's kind of been going along uh, for years so there you go and then you can you know all the other stuff here sound and system now what i haven't gone into web browsing yet we'll do that in a minute but before we get to web browsing let's just open up the kind of the um, home directory so here's a kind of your standard sort of file browser down the left here you can kind of go into all the different uh, directories and then of course here and it does work with photos i downloaded some photos that i took from one of my recent videos and look we can you clicked on that so it's a huge jpeg and it doesn't do any auto resizing we have to keep clicking on this little my zoom out button here until we can zoom out let's drag this bar across here so we can get just a little bit more room for our photo oh and then we can go zoom out zoom out zoom out and there you go there's our photo and if we go back back and then we can click on uh, another one here and again we can do all the zoom out zoom out to try and get it into look at this this was from that vintage lens photo video that i did look at that lovely bokeh there in the background Okay, so that works. You could you could do a bit of multimedia, but I did copy over onto this machine an AVI file, and if you click on that, uh, basically it's encoded with XVID, that's the codec, and basically it doesn't do anything. You just get this blank square here, and it doesn't show you any video whatsoever. And if you try an MP4 file, well, it's got a big question mark on it. It doesn't even know what it is. And if you click on it, it says, please give me an application that you want me to open it for. So obviously, we're quite a few years behind in terms of the codecs that were available. But in terms of JPEG and things like that, everything was okay. Now, here's the real thing. What was it like to go on the internet? Well, Netscape was the browser. This is way before Firefox and Chrome and things like that. So Netscape was the order of the day. And for the fixed document that it gives you there, that actually works quite well. If you try to go over to linuxmandrake.com, that website is dead because unfortunately Linux Mandrake didn't survive. And so it says I cannot locate that server. So that disappears. If you go to kde.org, which still exists, unfortunately it can't communicate with it. So something going on there, probably to do with HTTPS or something like that, it can't do it. This interestingly, Linux Center actually still works. Look at this, wow, I didn't even know about this website and you've got all this kind of information here very nicely done in very very much the style then of web pages very simple just links and you would follow them and now of course if we try to go over to google.com let's see what we get google.com today and it's having a go it's having a real good try to do it but you can see look this here doesn't work all these texts here are messed up and all this stuff here on the left is all messed up, but it kind of works. But then if you try to actually do anything in here, so you know, if we try to look up, you know, uh, Firefox and actually does a search, if you now actually try to click on anything, let's see what happens if we click here. Is it gonna let me, there we go, click. Then it's not gonna do it. It cannot communicate because there's no common encryption algorithm. So the, the HTTPS, the SSL stuff from way back in 2000 to today, so much has changed, so much has been depreciated that it won't let you use it. However, I did find one website which I thought would be interesting to look at and that is actually Google using Wayback Machine. 
So actually you can go to Wayback Machine, which is the Internet Archive, and load up Google from 1998, and there it is. So there you go, Google Beta from 1998, and that is the kind of thing that Netscape would have been used to displaying uh, back then. So there you go, you can get Google if you go back 20 years, it works absolutely fine. Also, of course, with Netscape Communicator, you also got like an email program. So there was their built-in email program for using POP3 and IMAP4. And you also got a uh, composer, which was a HTML composing program. You kind of write your HTML in here and it would kind of like a Word document, like a word processing document, and it would create the HTML for you. And then you could publish it on your website, which is why all these web pages look, you know, like this. So they're kind of just the very, the very simple ones because that's basically the level that things were, you know, this Linux center, that's, that's the kind of document you'd create inside of that composer. Okay, so there we go, let's get out of there. Now, one other thing is quite interesting. If you go down here and you actually go to log out, we can actually log out, but you don't shut the computer down. You now get the chance to go back into other desktops. So it'll come up with a prompt here which will click, click, uh, click on Gary, but rather than KDE, we can actually go into GNOME. So let me just log in now. Okay, and now it will bring up GNOME. And so as you can see here is GNOME from back in those days. Very, very similar idea. You know, you click on the little thing here and that makes it disappear. Okay, here's your start button. And actually you'll notice all the same program. So they did it in such a way that the menu system was common. So if you installed an app on one, it would appear on the other desktop. So all the same, you know, programs that are there. And you know, you can still play that Nibbles game that I was playing a moment ago. Obviously now things are different. So on this one, the close and the maximize buttons are over here on the right hand side. Uh, okay, and then that's the X button to close it. So of course now you can go down here and you can log out of here. And what I will do is won't show you all of them, but there was quite a lot of the things you could choose from just from a default install. Let's go down to the next one, which was Window Maker. And let me log into that. Okay, oh, this is quite frightening. Um, this is a very, very different kettle of fish. I don't even know what half these things do. Oh, that brings me up a terminal. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know what that does. Double click it. Oh, I don't know. This is not familiar at all, but there you go. That was an alternative. Now if you right click, you've got the same menu system again, you see. So here we can go and play our Nibbles game again. There you go. You can still play it on every window manager. Okay, and I think here we can go to exit. Okay, and we'll go to exit. Uh, do you want to exit? Yes. Let's just try one more. Maybe something, see when something is a bit more familiar in this next one. Window maker, now let's try a black box. Okay, here we are in, in a black box and a very sort of minimalist desktop here and it's right hand click to get you all the menus just like we had before. Let's do our test here. Okay, there you go, so that works. Okay, and so there you go. There was lots to choose from. Uh, and that was uh, the Linux desktop from uh, 2000. Of course, now to shut it down, we click shut down. Yes, please shut it down. Well, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. Please hit that bell notification icon. And well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.